you know, you've, you've written two books, I think, to address some of these issues. One, the first book uh, called, it, its title is A World Without Islam. And your main argument is that the conflict uh, between East and West really has little to do with Islam or religion, per se, but more to do with regional, political, uh, and even uh, psychological differences between uh, the Middle East and, and Europe, uh, and that a conflict would have arisen regardless of whether we had Islam or not. Uh, but what, what's your message to Americans uh, as, as we're dealing with, as you said, now the longest war in American history? Uh, this war on terror, war in Afghanistan, war in Iraq, uh, now uh, in, in, in various parts of East Africa. Uh, it's the longest war in American history. It seems like an endless war. What's, what do Americans need to, to understand to get us out of the mindset of a continuous conflict, perpetual conflict that is based on culture, uh, towards uh, uh, rapprochement and even um, uh, reconciliation uh, between East and West. Right. Well, um, I think you fairly well summarized many of the main points of the book, uh, A World Without Islam. Um, I think the really important thing there is, and, and you, already, you already said it, so I'm, is that um, you don't need Islam to explain almost all of the crises and confrontations between the Middle East and, and the West today. I mean, when you look at, as, as we said, it, it, the imperial tradition, endless uh, military intervention by Britain, France, and now the United States primarily, uh, by the support for pro-Western dictators year after year after year, the suppression of democracy, the exploitation of natural resources in the area, and trying to keep that in the, in the hands of the West, the constant support for one-sided support for Israel in, in, the, in, the, in this conflict. I mean, there are just many, many reasons that have absolutely nothing to do with Islam, and you don't need Islam to explain them. Even in the Palestinian conflict, I mean, which I think people like to think of as religious, I think if the Jews coming from Europe, the, um, the Jews who, who fled to Palestine from Europe were Muslim or even uh, or Buddhist or whatever, Catholic or whatever, there would still be the same conflict over the land which the Israeli settlers uh, took over and expelled uh, Palestinians who were living there, and the struggle there continues. So it, it's not just, you know, let's get our history straight. I think it goes beyond that. Uh, if we say that this is fundamentally a religious or even cultural conflict, then what can we do about it? You know, you can't change Islam, you can't change Christianity, you're not going to change these cultures significantly. So you're essentially saying it's an in, in, impassable, in, impossible situation, and you throw up your hands. But if you say, on the other hand, look, there's some very specific, discrete issues, and we're talking about support for dictators and energy policy and military uh, boots on U.S. military boots on the ground and interventionism, etc. Then there are some concrete issues. You can discuss these. You can negotiate them. Uh, they're understandable to Americans rather than trying to think, oh, well, you know, this is some kind of uh, strange uh, theological uh, difference. I think they're practical issues and they need to be addressed. I think Americans are very fair minded people by and large, and if they are afforded a chance to hear the real, you know, the real issues on both sides and not just one side, uh, I think they might well support different kind of policies and 